So our next step is to configure our terminal server and make sure it's ready for us to install the SAP Business One client on and also uh, our Office 2010 software and anything else that we determine that we want to be able to demonstrate in a, you know, in a remote environment. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go down here, I'm going to use the server manager because it's nice and easy and I want to customize this server. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to add a role uh, and the role that I want to add is I want to make this a remote desktop services computer and remote desktop services is the new name that's been introduced for terminal services um, with the um, introduction of Windows Server 2008 R2. So that's what I want on here. Um, is there anything else? Nope, that's it. I'll say next and then uh, next again and what do I want? So the components that I want to load up on here are a remote desktop session host which is formerly known as terminal server. Now there's a couple of other components that I can load up on this machine as well if I want to. For example I could load up um, the remote desktop virtualization which allows me um, to you know uh, give users access to virtual machines using remote app and a desktop connection. I'm not going to do that. I just want to focus on the remote desktop session uh, content. The remote desktop licensing, uh, I'm not going to install that on this machine either because I'm going to put that on my small business server. My connection broker, the remote desktop connection broker is what you install if you have multiple uh, terminal servers and you want to do load balancing between those. The remote desktop gateway um, enables your authorized users to connect into remote desktop uh, sessions over the internet without actually having to open up any ports other than uh, HTTPS which is port 443. Now Small Business Server 2008 already comes with a terminal server gateway enabled so we don't need to install that. And then we've also got the remote desktop web access, um, which is formerly our terminal server web access. And this gives you the ability to access remote app and desktop connections through um, either the start menu or via a web browser. Now I'm going to install the TS web components on my small business server because I want that to be the machine that basically serves up all of my content. Okay, so all I want this machine to do is basically function as my remote desktop session host. So I'll say next, next. All right, now it's asking about the licensing mode. Now the way that you're normally going to license this is probably per user. All right, um, but I'm so I'm going to specify per user right now, and I'll say next. Then I'll add the users or user groups that can connect to this um, host. So what I'm going to do off my, dom off my domain, um, I'm going to add my domain users because I want basically anyone that I set up an account on my demo system to actually have access to the um, terminal server. So that's okay. So that's now selected. And then I'll say next. All right. Now what I can do is I can configure the um, session host server um, so that it delivers up um, specific additional functionality uh, that makes it similar to Windows 7. Now this is going to chew up additional bandwidth and it's going to chew up additional system resources. So this is things like giving the ability to do audio and video playback audio recording redirection so you can record from a remote session uh, and also give you the Windows Aero functionality in a remote desktop. Uh, I don't want to install any of those because we don't really need them for the purposes of our demonstration server. So I'm just going to say next and that's all good. It's just warning me, hey, if you've installed any applications on this machine, once you enable it as a remote desktop server, you may have to reinstall those, but we haven't done that. So that's why it's important to do this first and then come back in and install our applications. So now I'll say install and we'll let the installation run. 
it's going to pause while it's going. Ah, actually, didn't even need to do that because the installation process was so fast. Now I'll choose close. Do I want to restart now? Yes, we'll let that restart. Now you can see it's configuring our Windows features and then it's going to ask me to log on again, which I'll do. Now, from a licensing perspective, obviously, um, if you sign up for a Microsoft Action Pack subscription, you're going to get uh, terminal server or remote desktop client access licenses for you to use. Uh, and then you need to install a licensing server, you need to activate that, and you need to um, apply those uh, remote desktop or terminal server cows um, to that licensing server. If you don't do that, you've got a period of time, I think it's around about 30 days. Um, it may be a bit longer, but let's work on the basis that it's 30 days. You've got 30 days grace period before the terminal server will stop accepting connections. So again, bear in mind that you will need to do that uh, and don't leave it too long because you don't want to be uh, out on site ready to do a demonstration and then suddenly find out that your um, remote desktop server uh, wasn't correctly licensed and then it shut down and you can't do the demonstration that you needed to. So that's now done. Um, we've got our servers customized. I'm going to say don't show that window at login and we're now ready to go. So the next step um, that I'm going to take is I'm going to go now and finish configuring my terminal services web access on my small business server 2008 machine. So in order to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that machine running so I just close the um, console window and then I come back here and I look at my small business server 2008 demo server and I'll connect because it's happily running away in the background. Now I'm going to log on. And what I want to do now is I want to start uh, configuring the rest of my terminal services requirements. So what I want to do is I want to go and make sure that the terminal server web access components are loaded on my small business server. So I'm going to use the server manager for that. So I'll just click on the icon. And then what I want to do is I want to click over here on roles and I want to see all the roles that are installed. Now you can see I've already installed the terminal services role. That's actually done as a standard part of the small business server install. So I'm just going to scroll down here and under terminal services, you'll see that um, the components that are installed are the TS gateway and that's it. Now I'm going to add TS licensing and TS web access um, to this server. So I'll say add role services and I'll say I want to add TS licensing and TS web access. Now here's the thing. I do not recommend that you set up your small business server as a terminal server. It's just not a good idea. Um, you should always keep uh, your a machine dedicated as a terminal server. So I'm going to say next and we're just going to say now this terminal server licensing server what uh, is the scope of the machines and it's going to cover and we'll just say this domain and then I'll go in and say install and we'll let that run and that's going to install all the necessary components and you can see that our uh, installation has succeeded and I'll say close because that's all we really need to do I'm not going to go into the details of activating your licensing server um, at this point in time. We might cover that in a later session uh, if there's a requirement to do that. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm just going to need to con connect to my terminal server again. And I want to go and click on Start, Administrative Tools, go up here to Remote Desktop Services and go to my Remote App Manager. Now what I need to do here is I need to tell the system which um, computer is my TS Web Access computer. So 
I just go in and I need to add my small business server to the TS Web Access Computers group. So to do that, click down here on Start, go into Administrative Tools, Computer Management, Local Users and Groups, and you'll see here in My Groups, I've got my TS Web Access Computers. Double click on there, now I need to say Add. And what I need to do is I need to go up here under my Object Types, and make sure that the computers is selected and then type in the computer name which is OECSB server might help if I could type correctly so yep that's it check names OECSB server check names that's now checked I'll say OK apply that and I'll say OK close that down now I can refresh and you'll see now that the TS Web Access Computers group is populated. So that's ready to go. Next step I want to do uh, is I want to change my digital signature settings. So here I'm going to say change. And I want to sign with the digital certificate. And here I'm going to say change. And it's saying that I've got no certificates available that meet the criteria for signing um, my applications and so on. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to export my digital certificate from my small business server and import it onto my, um, my terminal server. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to move across to our small business server. And then we're going to export the certificate from uh, where we stored it in IIS. So I'll click on Start. I'll go into IIS Manager. Again, we'll just expand that out. Choose my OEC SB server. I simply scroll down here onto my server certificate. Double click. Now there's the certificate that I want. So I simply select it and I choose Export. And then I'll give it a name. So uh, where am I going to export it to? So I'll export it out to my Documents folder and I'll call this OEC Certificate. And that'll be a PFX file. And so I'll say OK. Now I'm going to put in a password so if this certificate file gets into anybody's hands, they're going to need to have this password to work with it. So I'll make up my own password there. And then when we import it on our terminal server, it's also going to ask us for that password. So I'll say OK. So that's now done. Let's just get rid of that. Now, what I'm going to do is come back over here to my terminal server and I'm going to navigate out to where I've stored that file which is on OEC SB server and I'll use C dollar sign to get us to the root go to my users Richard my documents and you can see there is our OEC certificate file so we'll copy that and then we'll come back here onto our terminal server C drive and what we'll do is we'll paste that actually we won't paste it there we'll go to our documents folder and we'll paste it in our documents folder I mean you can put it basically anywhere you like as long as you've got the permissions to, to access that location and you remember where you put it so what's the next thing I need to do well the next thing I need to do is I need to install that file so I right click on it, choose Install PFX. I'll say Next. And Next again. What it's asking me now is for the password for the private key. So that's the password that was created when we exported that docu that uh, certificate. And I'm going to mark that key as exportable so I can back it up um, at a later stage if I need to. And then I'll say Next. I'll automatically select the certificate store based on the certificate, say next and say finish. The import was successful. 